Wisconsin's hardworking dairy farmers are a talented bunch in more ways than one. Balancing farm work, family life, and hobbies on the side, all in a day's work in America's Dairyland. This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland is brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. Wisconsin dairy farm families are passionate about caring for their cows and leaving the land better than when they inherited it, which means a fresher, better product for you. But they also make time for other passions. Get to know these dairy farmers who lead interesting lives outside of their dairy domain. Like Katie Kinshu, Growing up on her family's dairy farm outside of Fond du Lac gave Katie the foundation she needed once she discovered her passion for CrossFit. Being a farm kid, you were always kind of like physically active, moving around, like I can unload a wagon of hay and it's not a big deal, picking rocks, like being able to pick up heavy objects was pretty normal. I started CrossFit in 2013. I was a senior in high school and I did a video project on my older sister, Jessica, who started CrossFit because she stopped running because she got injured. And while I was at the gym filming her, I was like, this is so much fun. Like it looks really cool and like the people are really nice. A week later, I started going like two days a week. Then it was like three days a week and slowly but surely built. And then I was like kind of formulating my life around it. The hard work that I learned as a farm kid, like, okay, if you're just consistently doing things and getting better every day and trying to, like, just be 1% better every day, the same thing applies in CrossFit. Like, you're trying to think long-term of, like, I want to be healthy forever, live to see my great-grandkids, that sort of, like, concept and mentality. My goal is to just be the fittest person I can be, and so a big part of that is making sure my nutrition is as great as it can be. So I involve a lot of whole foods. I don't eat a lot of processed food, but I involve dairy as much as I can in my diet as well. So a lot of Greek yogurt. I drink whey protein pre and post workout. I involve a lot of cheese <laughs> because we're Wisconsin, you can't not have cheese. Ice cream is like a pretty large staple in my life too. So that's probably more of the reason I work out is because I eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> For me, I include dairy because it's a really economical way to fill the holes in my nutrition that I can't get from other sources. And there's so many vitamins and minerals found in milk, the calcium, potassium, vitamin D, all those things, protein, and it also tastes really good. CrossFit is very similar to agriculture in the fact that you don't always see growth every single day. But at the end of a season or at the end of a really long cycle or stretch, you can see like, oh, I put 20 pounds on my back squat over six months. Just like, okay, over six months, this field grew from a seed to this large crop. The little things that happen every single day kind of behind the scenes, they aren't big and flashy by any means, but in the long term, they really produce some great outcomes. Discover more Wisconsin stories by streaming Discover Wisconsin anytime, anywhere. Coming up, it's a garden gone wild. Don't go away. We're back exploring the lives of farmers beyond dairy on Discover Wisconsin. Adopting new farming techniques while juggling multiple jobs is not uncommon for Wisconsin's dairy families. And that especially rings true for Shelly Grosnick at Crimson Ridge Dairy near Watertown. Say. Grew up on a dairy farm, actually, just a couple miles down the road. Cute little story. I went to college and married the boy next door when I came home. And while dairy farming will always hold a special place in her heart, Shelly has since discovered her true passion, produce. My mom had a garden always, and she did a lot of canning, and so did my grandparents as well. That's where the spark started. And it wasn't until after the kids were born 
that I really got into it, did more of it. After I had Tucker, our second, then I got an autoimmune disease. I got very, very sick after having him. I had a lot of migraines and other health issues. And over the course of a few years, uh, figured out I had a lot of food sensitivities. I literally could eat nothing from a grocery store, absolutely nothing. I couldn't even eat an apple without getting sick. But when I ate my own home canned fruits and vegetables and our own meat and things like that, then I, I felt good and I felt healthy. And with that, like the garden just naturally grew and the kids got involved and I was able to, to expand. And the more that I made my own food, then people were asking like, hey, can I buy that from you? So I started going to the farmer's markets. It was a hobby that turned into a necessity that morphed into a business is essentially what it was. And Crimson Kitchen and Gardens was born. It started off very basic, you know, carrots, sweet corn, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, things that I needed to make salsa. Salsa was my like first product that I made, but mostly canned a lot of vegetables and fruits for myself, for the kids, for our growing family. Every year, the kids get to pick their own vegetable. Like they get to pick something fun to plant in the garden to keep the kids involved because this is a family business, a family deal. We have natural manure. Uh, which we use as fertilizer from the cows that feeds the garden, which feeds my plants, which feeds myself. We have chickens that give us their eggs, but then also their chicken manure gets to go on the garden as well as compost. But also if I have extra produce or if I miss pig and cucumber and it, you know, like monster size, that'll go into a mixture to feed the cows because cows actually really like fruits and vegetables too. We like to call that creative efficiencies. Chickens and the gardening and the cows, zinnias and pumpkins and cucumbers. I'm a bouquet. I sell them at the market. Helping daddy feed cows and the heifers and the calves. Help daddy get the bottle calves up. But we feed the bottles to them out there, so I bring the bottles to there. The calves need that to Milk comes from home. Farm started back in 1888. My great grandfather passed down through the generations. I'm fourth generation. The most joy comes from watching things grow, whether it's putting the seed in the ground and watching the plant come up all summer, watching a newborn calf, raising it up to, to be a good mother, you know, a good milk cow. True to the farmer, when it's in their heart, they're doing the right thing, and that's what they want to do. I mean, they just provide the best thing they can for the people and the best care for the animals. Getting sick and going through so many health issues really was my message that my focus is food. Whether I'm raising it, growing it, eating it, my focus is food. A lot of people are, are not connected to a farm anymore. And uh, as soon as I say, I'm a dairy farmer, my kids and my husband and I are dairy farmers, they'll ask a few more questions about that. And I get to tell them like, oh, we're a full circle farm. You know, we're the fourth generation on my husband's homesteaded farm and you know we all work together. There's a, a story behind the food you are eating which makes it more of a food experience. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to learn more about the dairy industry in our state. Up next, this dairy mom has mastered the art of espressing herself. Stay with us. Discover Wisconsin is back and we're going beyond dairy. Less than two hours from Madison, Milwaukee, and Chicago, Elkhorn is a convenient stop for travelers. Kyle Crest Holstein and Jerseys found this area to be the perfect place to homestead their farm. This family of four has been in the dairy industry since 1985 and finds a way to commit daily to community, conversation, and coffee. Kyle Crest Holsteins started in 1985. My husband Dave and I met on a softball diamond. We ended up on the same co-ed team, so he was already farming. I was a country girl in Whitewater and didn't grow up on a farm. We were in our 20s and we're just learning all of the stuff about dairy. Everything that you can imagine that was traditional, harvesters, tie stall barn, it was very labor intensive. Hayden was born in 93, Mackenzie was born in 97. We came here, we bought this farm at in 2007, we built our brand new dairy barn and we hooked it onto our existing shop. We built the basement parlor. And then in 2012, my son graduated high school. 
So when I went to UW-Madison, my plan was to take over the farm in Mel Colsteins. That's the breed that my dad started with back in the 80s, and that's what 90% of the cows are in Wisconsin. And I took a class on the different breeds that are here in North America. And I started to learn more about the Jersey breed. Their big pros are feed efficiency, calving ease, longer life, and the component premium. Why not milk the breed that gives you the most output for your input cost? I had a friend at college that milked jerseys, so on the weekends I would go help him milk the cows and got some hands-on experience and just kind of fell in love with them. The thing is with jerseys is not only do they make a lot of economical sense, but they have quite the personality, which makes it a lot more enjoyable to work with them. There's something about Wisconsin farmers that just I have so much respect for. You know, there are years where farmers don't get enough credit or enough money for all the effort and time that they put in. There's something about that that strikes me, and they're so independent. And I hope that everybody that my age, you know, coming out of college, I hope people can find something that they can really care about. It might sound silly, but I, I truly believe that uh, God put me on this earth to milk cows, but not only milk cows, I, I believe that he put me on this earth to milk jerseys. It's a pretty amazing feeling being a backbone of Wisconsin, knowing that every day you get up and it's not like you're dreading it. You love what you do, it is not a job. It is absolute passion. We are shepherds of our animals, we are taking care of our land, we're also taking care of our family, and to have the family be part of that, it's an incredible feeling. I really learned about how important family and family discussions were, and it just has been a natural fit for me to move from one thing to the next. The Kyle's love for dairy farming manifests not only in the milk they produce, but in another type of beverage involving milk. My coffee shop, Perk Up, that was always a dream of mine. I came from a Scandinavian background, so coffee, community, neighbors is all I know. It's something I always knew I would do, so we moved forward with finding a building and finding good coffee. The building I actually ended up buying was a bar where Dave and I met, and it was called the Blue Moon Saloon, and we went there all the time after these softball games, so I was supposed to buy that building. It's been a great experience, and it really gave me another platform to be very rooted in a community that I love very much and still make a difference. The beauty of Perk Up is it's kind of known as Elkhorn's living room. The products that I use in my coffee shop is I buy back mine and Dave's milk. I think that's kind of cool because I actually can tell the consumers that my hands, my family's hands have had everything to do with the product. I picked everything local as much as I could. You know, I pick local coffee beans, I pick local tea, I pick local chocolate. I just really have to do this wholesome product. So I start with my wholesome milk and I end up with a wholesome latte and I, I think they really get a kick out of that. I mean like people are first and money is second to me. First of all, I would have never been a farmer if the opposite was true. Want to see our team in action from behind the camera? Follow Discover Wisconsin on Instagram for photos and more. Coming up, we head way up north where a pint-sized idea turned into a pint of beer. We're moving on up to Grantsburg, here on Discover Wisconsin. Grantsburg is on the up and up, and a lot of that is thanks to the area's dedicated local dairy farmers, like the Peterson family, who foster a tight-knit community spirit. Four Cubs Farm was homesteaded back in 1877 by my great-great-grandfather. I'm the fifth generation now operating the farm, along with my parents, Gary and Chris. Growing up, we only were milking 33 cows. Currently, we're milking almost 1,000. In the fall of 2017, we had a major fire and lost our whole milking parlor and holding area, uh, completely burnt to the ground and was unusable. We moved 800 cows 10 at a time in six hours. We had heard some other people that had been driving up this direction said it was just truck after truck after truck heading south to distribute these cows to the five different farms that helped us out. 
We've seen that in the farming community that they're willing to help out people in trouble all the time. Whether you hear somebody coming to help with a harvest because somebody got sick or in the case of our fire, somebody coming to, you know, these guys all coming to help move cows. I think they want to help because they know if they were in the same situation, they know the rest of us would come to help them. I think it's great being part of Wisconsin's dairy heritage and traditions. It makes the state strong. It makes the countryside beautiful. There's a great family tradition in the dairy business. My family is still involved. My parents are both actively involved. My son, Jake, who helps the most out at the farm, is actually grandpa's right-hand man the whole summer. They do odd jobs, whether it's running some wiring or fixing a tractor. My wife has her own business off the farm, and Izzy's a little too small yet. <laughs> In 2014, I started a nonprofit called the Grantsburg Revitalization Operation, uh, lovingly called GROW. And our focus is uh, transforming Grantsburg, revitalizing. And one of our biggest goals is beautifying our downtown and bringing businesses and residents and tourism to Grantsburg. And a big step in that revitalization involves Wisconsin's second favorite beverage, after milk, of course. Our inspiration for starting the brewery was creating a space for our community that we can gather and have fun. We used a lot of local vendors and resources so that everyone felt a sense of pride when they come in too. They say, I built that or I made that or whatever, I contributed to this and it gives us pleasure to do business with everyone else, we all benefit. So when we wanted to do the brewery, we knew right away that we wanted it to be tied to the farm. And so we decided to have a grain to glass concept. So we grow our own barley and our wheat, and we'll use that for the brewing process. And so it ties in from the grain all the way into your glass. So we feed the spent grains from the brewing process back to our dairy cows at Four Cubs Farm. And then we also are growing our own barley to have custom malted so we can brew our own beer with the grains that we are producing. My husband, Ben, is currently our brewer and I run the marketing and HR pieces of it. Ben and I have always known that we wanted to go into business together and I grew up on a farm. Tying the farm to the brewery gave us an opportunity to combine our passions and create an experience around the beer that ties in the farm. It's really exciting to be part of the Wisconsin beer world as well as the dairy industry. We have a great sense of pride in our state and we're very passionate about providing products that are in alignment with everything that says Wisconsin. It always amazes me to hear about farmers' lives beyond dairy farming. To think that farming goes above and beyond a full-time job and these hardworking farmers still make time to practice their passions on the side is incredible. These farmers are the backbone of their families, their communities, and of Wisconsin. When you meet a farmer, ask about their passions and thank them for the contributions they make to Wisconsin. This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland is brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Stream Discover Wisconsin anywhere, anytime. Continue the adventure on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Smart TV, Chromecast, and discoverwisconsin.com.